Good afternoon and welcome to the booth of Oculus Brazil. Um, my name is David Kern. I do a presentation about um, the biomechanics and uh, the tomography. Um, and um, I will show you the two devices, especially the Corvus ST and also the Pentacam, um, as you can see it here on the picture. First of all, the Corvus ST, I would like to show you some facts. Um, this is a high speed Scheinflug technology camera um, which records 4330 pictures a second. And um, we get a coverage, as you can see here, of 8 millimeters horizontal. And um, the Corvus ST is a non contact tonometer, so there's an air puff, a symmetrically metered air puff, um, which deformates the cornea. I would like to show you this in um, a short video we have here. So during this video 140 images are captured in 31 milliseconds um, during this air pulse. What is the Corvus good for? There are four things um, the Corvus can be used for. Uh, first of all, there's a BIOP. This is a new created uh, biomechanical index, um, which is um, a corrected intraocular pressure, um, dependent on the cornea thickness. And additionally, and this is very, um, very unique on the biomechanical properties. This is something I don't um, explain today in, today in detail. I go deeper in the point two, which is the screening for biomechanical or um, corneas, and point three, which is the early ectasia detection with the Corvus ST in combination with uh, the Pentacam. As a fourth point, um, I also don't go deeper, is the assessment of the corneal stiffness. So first of all, what is um, ectasia and what is the development of ectasia? Um, generally, you have a healthy cornea, first of all, as you can see it here. Um, the second is you get a change or then you get a change of the elastic modulus. And after the change of the elastic modulus, um, we get the biomechanical, we get a change in the biomechanical properties. And this is what we can measure with the Corvus ST. One step further um, is the tomographical keratoconus. We can detect it with the Pentacam. And if you go even one step more, there's the topographic um, keratoconus um, detection, which is a little bit more obvious. And um, at the end, we can even see it in the slit lamp, as you can see it here on the picture. So first of all, I would like to talk about the CBI, which is an index uh, created for the Corvus ST, um, which uh, is tested in 470 normal eyes and 170 keratoconus eyes. We try to distinguish between these eyes um, using this index and what we can see here in this table chart is that we can distinguish very good and we get a 98% um, correct predicted cases. I would like to show you a, a case report about the uh, about the CBI. Um, this is a case report from Dr. Vincingera, and as you can see here, this is a topography of an eye. You can see this topography looks quite normal. Um, and when we have a look at our CBI index, um, which I explained at the moment, we can see that this is, that this is highly red um, highlighted. We can see a, a number of 0 0.7, which tells us, okay, there might be a keratoconus. So how do we know that this index works? We just have a look at the other eye and what we can see, the topography is really um, abnormal, as you can see it here. And um, the CBI is very, um, very high. So we have a number of 1.0 and we are sure, okay, there is a keratoconus. And because we know there are just bilateral keratoconi, we can say, okay, also on the other eye, there is a keratoconus. Okay, the next step is we take the biomechanics and we do a combination of the biomechanical properties with the tomography of the Pentacam, as you can see it here. This is very unique. We are the only um, um, manufacturer who takes parameters from two devices and combines it into one parameter. This parameter is called TBI, which is the um, tomographic biomechanical index. 
So this is the display to show it. I would like to go a little bit more in detail. On the left side we see the Corvus parameters which are for example the stiffness parameter. So all the biomechanical parameters you can see on the left side and on the right side you can see the tomography parameters like four maps, refractive map from Pentacam, there's the actual curvature, there's the elevation map front, back side and also the corneal thickness. Taking all these parameters, we can, with the biomechanical parameters, we can get the CBI, as I explained before. We can get the bed D, which is a pentacam parameter, and using all the single parameters, um, we can do with a very, very fancy uh, modern uh, technology, which is a random forest um, uh, technology um, based on artificial intelligence. We can create, or we created the TBI, and we get a very, very good prediction. Also the TBI I would like to show you in a case report. So uh, first of all I would like to show you the results Sorry, um, of the clinical study. So what um, Dr. Renato Ambrosio did was we tried to distinguish between um, um, normal eyes and very early um, keratoconi. So um, what you can see here is um, the normal eyes shown on the left side and what we show here is the um, very asymmetric um, ectasia eyes you can see on the right side and these are the very asymmetric ectasia eyes which differs very much from the left eye to the right eye so um, what we can see here that we can distinguish very good between the normals and the um, and the um, very early ectasias so the bad D this is the tom uh, the pentacam index you can see here uh, this cannot distinguish as good as the TBI but it's also very precise again as statistics the ROC curve shows shows us that the TBI works very, very good. We get a very high uh, prediction the CBI and the BAD-D, which is the single tomography or biomechanical index, they are not as good. So what I would like to tell you is that the combination of both parameters are, um, are, um, is the best way to predict um, um, a subclinical keratoconus. So this is a case report I would like to show you. We have um, two eyes, as you can see on the left side is the right eye. So we have have a normal topography or let's say it seems to be normal. The left eye um, is a post-surgery, ref uh, a post-refractive eye um, which developed an ectasia. Now we know, okay, if we operate also the right eye, we can say, okay, there's a very, very high probability that also on the right eye uh, ectasia would have developed. What we did now, we measured the right eye and we saw that the TBI was very, very high, so very abnormal 0.82. If we could have measured the um, with the Corvus 10 years before when the refractive surgery was done, um, we could have avoided this, um, this ectasia to this patient. Okay, so um, this should be the future in um, refractive screening using Pentacam and Corvus in combination and this makes um, life more safer and more effic efficient for the, in the refractive screening. So in summary, the conclusion of the Corvus SC, um, you can do a measurement of the, bio uh, of the biomechanical properties. Um, we can do a modern glaucoma screening, which I, which I didn't mention today. But um, if you want to go more in detail, we can just talk right after this talk again. Um, then we can do a measurement of the cross-linking e effect. And we can do a very early and precise keratoconus detection using uh, corneal uh, biomechanics, what I explained before, the CBI, and uh, finally the combination of biomechanics and tomography, um, which is the TBI, um, can be done also with the Corvus esteem. Just to show you, this is the literature about, um, we have some handouts here, if you would like to take this with you, we have it just right there on the table. And thank you for your attention.